Well, that awkward moment ended in the hospital. Hello from Bangalore, my name is Ivana and if you saw yesterday's vlog, you know that my dad ended up in the hospital on the day when we were supposed to fly to Bangalore. Obviously that didn't happen and he had to stay a night in the hospital. The reason why I didn't finish that vlog is because I wanted to tell you the whole story. But first of all, thank you so much for all your kind well wishes. It definitely means a lot to know that we have this incredible supportive family behind us and I 100% also know that if anything um, was needed you guys would just be there but for now I am just so grateful for all your well wishes. It just makes me feel better about everything that happened because obviously this was absolutely horrifying and it took me two weeks to film this video literally today when you're watching this video i filmed it because i procrastinated it as much as i could i didn't want to talk about it i didn't properly talk about what happened even with my brother only with nadine my best friend because it came up and in general i don't like talking about these things because it's it's too horrifying like i can't even so let me just start at the beginning and in case you didn't watch yesterday's video here's a little flashback <laughs> Done. Are we going back? We're we going to Bangalore? No, I like to. Need more Bangalore? I stop it what you say. You'll eat them all Bangalore. Who? In? Nar. You'll eat them all Bangalore. Bangalore, what's it going to Bangalore! The stadt where I born. At this moment, me and my dad were on our way to the hotel to literally pick up our luggage and go to the airport to catch our 9 p.m. flight to Bangalore. My dad, as you saw, started acting really weird. And luckily, I knew that he had this kind of strange episode uh, a couple of years back. Apparently, it is called a TIA, I learned later, and some of you medical students or even doctors already recognized it and mentioned it in the comments yesterday. What it means is that my dad had a blood clot in his brains and it just makes him forget everything temporarily. It can be super dangerous because I think the blood clot can make an artery burst or like because the artery is clot clotted and then like more blood keeps flowing and then the artery bursts and then there is a medical term for it, but I cannot remember it. Please forgive me now. If you're a medical student or a doctor, please feel free to mention it down in the comments below. So it is a very serious situation. The moment that this happened, I was immediately alerted because of this story. And this is also the reason why I wanted to talk about this and be open about this, even though I feel extremely uncomfortable about it. Because I want to raise awareness for this issue and maybe it can save someone's life. The story that immediately popped up in my mind, and obviously if you fly a lot, this story will also haunt you as well. And that's the reason why I'm telling it, because it's very important to notice. One of my former colleagues, I used to work in the corporate world, he was an extremely successful consultant within the company. He was even CEO at one point, and he obviously loved his work worked a lot. It is one of the most impressive people I have ever met in my life. He's like two meters tall. Unfortunately, at that time, he was not in good physical shape. He was overweight, but that didn't stop him from doing what he loved most. He had a beautiful wife. They were high school sweethearts, two amazing children. So basically his life was kind of sorted. One morning, he was on his way to the airport because he had a meeting abroad and in the Netherlands, you have this like quite sharp exit to the airport and there's one road that is just straight ahead next to it. So he was driving on this road and since morning he had a pain in his left shoulder. Last minute, even while he was taking the exit, he decided that he was not gonna take this flight. He immediately shifted to the left lane, which was straight forward and he went to the hospital it turned out that he was having a heart attack. Had he gotten on that plane, he would... <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm trying really hard to get through this video without any crying. Had he gotten on that plane, he would have left his wife and two 
children behind, which was obviously not worth it. And I'm so happy he told me that story because that story is always with me before getting on a flight. Like, what is your physical condition? Do you feel well enough to fly? And it was also the story that immediately popped up in my mind when my dad started acting so strange. So I was like, dad, I don't think we should take this flight. Let's just go to the hospital to have you checked out. Even if it's nothing, I don't care. I don't want to take this risk because if anything happens to you on that flight, I will never forgive myself for not, you know, going to the hospital for a check first. We have time. I think we still had an hour. There is a special fear I think reserved for life and death situations, whether it's your own or someone, you know, who you are close with or care about or love. And it's this like chilling fear that just goes through your bones. It feels like your blood is freezing. I like, I feel like my, my neck is being choked up and like, it just feels like when you jump into freezing water, that, that kind of fear. So I was starting to feel that and my dad refused to go to the hospital and I was like, this is not okay. And at the same time, he was like saying gibberish, like it didn't make any sense. At that point, he still didn't tell me that he didn't remember our home address because that, that would have got me like sorted in a second. I didn't know what to do. So <laughs> because obviously I'm used to listening to my dad and now I had to like force him to do something. So I decided to call my mom and I told her what happened and she said like, no, do not take that flight, take him to the hospital immediately. This happened uh, three years ago as well. He hasn't been on the proper medication for the last couple of years because he is a very stubborn doctor and he just needs to get checked out by a um, doctor immediately. So I was like, okay, that's it, dad, you need to like zip it, sit down. You're not speaking anymore. You, the only thing that you have to do is get into the cab. And in these kind of situations, I'm extremely strict. I don't think about anybody's emotions and I can only think like one or two steps ahead. So the only thing in my mind was I need to get a cab. I need to get my dad to the hospital. Don't think about anything else right now because I can't. I'll just break down. The hotel staff was super friendly. They were like, oh, do you want us to get you a cab? Because obviously I was like rushed and I said like, my dad needs to go to the hospital right now. What is the, what is the best hospital to go to? And they told us uh, the hospital where we should go. They offered to get us the cab. And I was like, listen, I cannot deal with any bargaining right now. So if you can give me a set price for a taxi, that's fine, I'll take your taxi, but otherwise I'm taking an Uber because I was trying to look up the Uber. It was 5, 5 5.15 or something, so not yet rush hour and Udaipu traffic is pretty okay, I have to say. So they were like, well, we can't give you the price, blah, blah. And then, and I was like, you know what? Then I'm just booking on Uber and I was just praying to God that Uber would give me a cab ASAP. And, you know, I wouldn't lose like five minutes that, you know, could have made a difference for my dad. So luckily Uber gave me a cab, three minutes, got into the cab, uh, rushing to the hospital. So in these kind of situations, I honestly can't speak about anything. I just need to focus on what's in front of me right now. Otherwise, I'm just going to fall apart and lose my ish. So I'm just quiet, observing my dad sometimes asking him a question just to like make sure that he's still there and he's still like no I'm fine we need to go to the airport and I'm like we're not speaking right now take him to the hospital literally like drag him into the ER I almost started crying at that point because it just became way too real that something might be like way too wrong with my dad and I was just like rushing into the ER and I was like you need to check out my dad he might be having a stroke I don't know what it is please check out my dad they were like uh, okay sure immediately did some tests for a heart attack he cleared on that nothing was wrong with him and he was just like there's nothing wrong with me oh and I'm like shh, shh, you you are not allowed to speak right now so Obviously, I was still like trying to keep my calm. They were like, you know what? We're calling the neurologist to check him out because I told them about the blood clot thing and whatever, the TIA. So I was like, okay, yeah, fine. I had to go to the reception because 
something else that I really, really, really want to raise awareness about is I found out that my dad didn't have travel insurance. Now, India, compared to the rest of the world, is a very cheap country. Uh, healthcare here is super cheap. The consult with the doctors only costs 500 rupees, which is like five or six euros or something. But at the same time, even in India, if you have to have surgery, brain surgery, whatever kind of surgery, it could easily run up into tens of thousands of euros, which is like so unnecessary because travel insurance, like my travel insurance is like 10 euros a month. So I was like, dad, do you have travel insurance? He was like, no. And I was like, okay, we'll talk about this later. I'm going to fix this right now. <laughs> so I just went over to the counter, filled in a, a gazillion forms, uh, came back, I put him on the phone with my brother because I wanted my brother like to stay with him. I, obviously, I, we also called my mom and um, just came back and he was like there, like, la, 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 la. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> we're not speaking right now. Obviously terrified, so holding his hand and everything. Neurologist came, said like, we need to do an MRI because for usually for the TIA, the, the, the blood clots, you get blood thinner medicines. But at the same time, what the doctor also said, if there is like a ruptured artery and you give him blood thinners, then obviously that's gonna start bleeding even more and you have an even bigger problem. So they needed to do an MRI first and an ECG, which is like a monitoring of the heart. MRI is like basically looking into your brain and stuff with, with magnetic fields and things. So I was like, yeah, sure. And they were like, obviously he needs to stay in the hospital 24 hours for observation. You can check him into the, uh, in a room like over at that counter. They were super supportive and so calm and peaceful, which is exactly what I needed in that moment. I went over to the counter. They first told me that I could choose a room for, for him, depending on the costs. But the lady at the counter was like, nah, you foreigners, you need like a separate room and whatever. Somebody also mentioned that if you're a foreigner, they will try to, you know, extort as much money from you as possible. But in that moment, I was like, I do not care how much money we need to pay for anything because I just want to know that my diet is safe. And I do feel that hospitals are always underappreciated and underpaid. So the staff obviously and the doctor. So honestly, I do not mind contributing to that if it, you know, if it benefits my dad in terms of comfort and also if it benefits the hospital, like please use that money for something good to help other people. I will gladly pay for that. So they checked him into the executive director room or something, which is the room that you saw. There was a big bed. It was a private room. There was even a bed for me. There was a big couch. Basically that room is designed for like a whole Indian family. And we were there just the two of us. We were there for like, I think one or two hours just waiting until he could get the MRI done and the ECG. And then we went for that with an ambulance, which was also very fun. Just got his MRI done. He also got an ECG and we are in an ambulance. <laughs> what an adventure. Luckily he's fine. I'm fine, thank you. Yeah. He's feeling fine. We'll see like what the results say. I am all fine. Yes, Help. you will be 100%. Previously, three years ago, he also had a blood clot in his can I tell that or no? <laughs> okay. He says it was 10 years ago, but ten. mom and me are saying like ten. it was three years ago. Oh, so ten, ten years ago. Okay, so let's say 10 years ago he had a blood clot in and his it brain. Was, it was ten. Ten, 10 years ago. Fine. Fine. 10 years ago he had a blood clot in his brain and he could read his, you know, uh, his computer screen and he didn't know where he was and blah blah and he still drove home seriously stubborn doctors who don't take care of themselves and then he had to take blood thinner medicines for like two years and then he stopped again because stubborn doctors <laughs> and they drove my dad around in a, in a wheelchair I ordered food on Swiggy and the nurse was like did you order food I'm like yeah I'm hungry we're hungry we need to eat 
And he was like, he's not allowed to have outside food. And I'm like, you sound like, like all of you <laughs> who always prefer to have home cooked food. But I, obviously I understood that if there was something like wrong with him, he shouldn't have outside food. So I was like, okay, yeah, sorry dad. I'll wait with my food until you get your hospital food. So we got the MRI done. Later, they came back uh, with the results and everything was clear. So he got the blood thinner medicines. I think everything ended around midnight. So it started around five and it all ended around midnight. And if you're wondering like, wow, that's, that's so long. Why did it take that long for them to do all those tests? Well, let me tell you one thing. <laughs> all the tests that they did, usually you have to wait at least like a couple of weeks for that in the Netherlands. So this was actually super fast. I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute because I think there's also this image about Indian hospitals, which I want to set straight. Anyways, we were allowed to, uh, we were just sent off to sleep. My dad got his food. I started eating. In the meantime, obviously, when we were on our way to the hospital, I uh, alerted my friends here. I alerted Nishta, obviously, Sakshi and my friend M here. He arranged for our flights to get moved to the next day. And I'm just happy that it's all okay. I'm also happy, thank you yes. very much. For okay, our flight got I'm changed to tomorrow, the same time we're gonna check for his Dutch flight because that would be right after we arrive in Bangalore, which is gonna be extremely tiring travel and maybe we don't wanna do that right now. So we'll see. By the way, this is the hospital room, which is extremely fancy. I guess because we're foreigners, uh, they gave us the executive deluxe room and also charged us for it, which is perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, just so you see that, yeah, Indian hospitals, pretty good, pretty good. Nothing to complain about. I'm just waiting for the food. It is now almost 10.30 p.m. We're super hungry. We need to eat. Somebody yes. super tired needs to sleep yes. Yes. and drink water. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, thank you SpiceJet. They have a very flexible, um, you know, changing policy for the flights. So that was all sorted. And when all of this was over, I was like, I still can't speak. I just need to go and sleep right now because this was beyond horrifying. Obviously, I still didn't want to break down crying in front of my dad because we were still not out of the woods. I was like, I need to, to get you on a flight to mom because that's something that I was also feeling extremely guilty about, that something was happening to him while he was here. And obviously, if you have a life partner, my dad and mom, they have been college sweethearts. If anything happens to them, you want to be with them. And I was like, okay, if, like my mom, you just need to be with my mom right now. Obviously, I, I, I want to be with my dad too, but a life partner is something different than your children. So the next morning we woke up, they did some more tests. Everything came back clear. Luckily, the doctor still wanted to do like a 24 hour heart monitoring, but I told him like, doctor, if this is really not necessary right now, we can also do this in the Netherlands because if he misses tonight's flight to Bangalore, he will also miss his flight to the Netherlands. And obviously, like when something like this happens, you just want a person to be home as soon as possible, obviously, if it's safe. So the doctor said like, no, 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 it's something that they can also do in, back in the Netherlands. And he, they discharged us at 6 p.m., which was perfect for our 9 p.m. flight to Bangalore. Unfortunately, my dad didn't get any time to spend in Bangalore. He didn't even see my apartment because his next flight to the Netherlands was leaving at 4.30 a.m. in the morning and we landed in Bangalore at 11 p.m. that evening. So we had like five hours to kill at the airport. Obviously, during that time, I was still scared that something might happen to him. Uh, my mom also wanted either me or my brother to fly back with him. But the thing is, he only had a two and a half hour flight to Abu Dhabi where he would be alone. And on his next flight from Abu Dhabi to Amsterdam, he would be with the bunker, Anishta's husband. So I told my mom, mom, everything came clear, all of the tests. He has his medication now. The doctors 
um, gave him permission to fly. I think that we can take this chance and he can go to Abu Dhabi by himself. And then from there, the punker will be with him. So if anything happens, he will still not be alone. On that long flight, she was like, okay, sure. I think that is like a rational decision. So we took that decision. What I wanted to clear <laughs> about Indian hospitals. So my dad was so well looked after. I have no words, like all of those horror stories about Indian hospitals that you hear. Obviously, some of them should be true, otherwise they wouldn't be out there, but I wanna put a good story out there as well. They took really good care of my father. Everything was super hygienic. The nurses were super sweet. The doctors were super sweet. They did so many tests on him, like any possible tests that they could run, you know, to make sure that he's safe. They did that and that's also what we wanted. My dad was super proud walking around. This, this is a doctor, this is his crack. Walking around with his MRI, MRI scans and his uh, ECG results, like the heart monitoring stuff. He was like, I'm so happy with this. <laughs> when he got back to the Netherlands, obviously he immediately made a, an appointment with our family doctor who saw him on Monday, uh, the day, so the weekend after he landed. Uh, he sent him through to the neurologist in the Netherlands. And this is, this is where I wanna put a good story out there about Indian hospitals. He has to wait until December 11th before he can see a neurologist in the Netherlands. And here they did everything like within a couple of hours. When a doctor in the Netherlands saw all of the tests that they did, and all of the results that they got, he was like, holy moly, like in the Netherlands, you have to wait weeks before you get these appointments. So that is something really good. And I actually also heard that medical tourism to India is extremely popular because it is cheap compared to the rest of the world and it is fast. And I can now definitely also understand why. The only thing that, that is important is to have travel insurance. So make sure you have that because even in India, surgeries and those kind of things can get really expensive. In total, it costs us 550 euros, including everything, all of the tests, his uh, overnight stay in the hospital. Obviously I stayed with him in the hospital, all of his meals, the doctor's visits, everything was 550 euro, which is absolutely ridiculous because if you compare it to the Netherlands, obviously he does have travel ins uh, health insurance over there, but in the Netherlands only taking a blood test will cost you 300 euros. So it's, it's absolutely ridiculously cheap but also the care was really good, which is the most important thing um, to take into consideration. So for all of you asking, how is your dad doing right now? He's perfectly fine. He's taking his medication. He is his own chill self again. And I'm able to breathe again because this was absolutely a terrible rude awakening about, you know, the mortality of my dad. That's why I said like, hug your parents tight obviously my mom too like you just don't want to i don't even want to think about those things to be honest i felt extremely guilty for the longest of time and still when i think back about this i i feel really guilty and i'm very angry at myself and i'm very angry at my father because i think our itinerary was way too packed with not enough rest for him my dad is 65 years old which is obviously quite an old age even if he's fit and happy and chill he still needs to have his downtime and I didn't take that into consideration because something else I also want to raise awareness for. I got to, uh, you know, I got to know a whole different side of my dad. Apparently nowadays <laughs> he's a little bit of a pushover and he wants to make his daughter extremely happy. Whereas, you know, when I was younger, my dad would say yes and no to everything that we did. And now I feel that I'm more and more <laughs> becoming the parent and I have to take care of him because he just cares too much about my happiness and even up to a point where, you know, it might hurt his health. And that's not something that we want. So I'm still working on, you know, forgiving myself for making that crazy packed itinerary, which was obviously not suited for his uh, age and that's the final point I wanted to raise awareness about something that I definitely learned from this trip with my dad please please as an adult if you have that relationship with your parents try to spend 
time with them and get to know them as an adult because your relationship will change. I know people always told me this when I was younger, but now I'm actually starting to see like, wow, my dad is a different person than when I was growing up. He's like more relaxed and letting me take charge of everything and trusting me to make the right decisions. Somebody said, I guess your dad is your best friend. I don't know if I would say the best friend, but definitely someone who I trust enough to, you know, even talk about my date life without it having any repercussions. I know he made that joke about me getting married, but he doesn't often make those jokes. <laughs> but um, yeah, obviously my dad is a different person now than I was a child because I changed. I am an adult now and he also changed. So that's something I can definitely recommend you and just remind you that life is so short before we even started this trip i was already thinking about this because of the post of bruce passports uh, savvy and vid if you don't know them i have linked their blog and that post down in the description below and now i also experience like how quick you know things can take a turn in life you don't know what's going to happen you don't know what's around the corner so please hug both of your parents very tight if you only have one parent that's also fine please hug that person or like the parent figure in your life because you know parents are not made by birth parents are made by the you know by the upbringing they give you if any of your parents is currently struggling with their health my thoughts are with you my prayers are with you and thank you thank you so much for your support and this is also i think where i'm going to end this video this is me and my dad saying goodbye well he almost needs to check in for his flight back to amsterdam he's feeling good and healthy yes that's thank you Obviously, he loved India. I loved exploring India with him, and I hope to have him back very, very soon. We will see him and my mom very, very soon. Two, I'm gonna elaborate about new travel plans in next week Friday's video it's gonna be so cold oh my god I'm so not looking forward to that I am very much looking forward to that food but I'm gonna talk about that next week so make sure to subscribe also I'm uh, publishing two more videos next week on Monday and on Wednesday so Monday Wednesday Friday there will be a video next week not every day like it the, like was the like it was the case for the next the past two weeks oh my god i'm i'm too frazzled anyways make sure to subscribe to not miss any of my videos thank you thank you thank you so 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 much for all of your support i appreciate it each and every single day i can't believe i got through this video without crying <laughs> thank you bye see you soon